Hey, what's up? It's Joe Mike, and I'm actually doing a tutorial video. It's been a minute. Um, so, I'm going to do it old school. I've got my cell phone all rigged up and ready to record what I want to show you, which is how to work with threaded brass inserts when it comes to 3D printing. So what I have here, as I move my camera, I've got a box of threaded brass inserts. You may have seen these before, but all they are are really um, just brass inserts that are threaded, ready to accept. Uh, this one's a, a three millimeter, but they're ready to accept bolts of various sizes. You get various lengths and various uh, sizes of bolts in a package like this. Um, the longer the length, you'll notice it has more spurs to catch the material that you're planting it into. Uh, the shorter ones only really have a top and a bottom. These are incredibly handy with the, when it comes to 3D printing just because it can really make uh, parts that need to connect together incredibly rigid and stable um, and able to take a little bit more force than if you were to just bolt them together or um, try to force the threading into the hole, uh, which you can tap a small plastic hole, but it's not nearly as strong as if you were to use an insert with a bolt. Uh, I have gone ahead and done that with this piece here. Now this piece is really just a piece that I've been working on. It's part of another project, but I, I've printed two of these and I scrapped the idea for this specific design, but I'd already placed the uh, insets into these. So I thought it'd be a great time to show you how to actually work with these when it comes to 3D printing. Um, first off, you're going to need, obviously, some brass inserts. Uh, you can get a package like this off Amazon. It's not expensive. This one has uh, M2 through M5 in various lengths. And uh, if you've got a soldering iron, you're going to want to get some of these guys. These are specific tips that are designed to handle the brass inserts. And, oh, this is a five. And basically the insert just sits right on top of there. And obviously this part's on the iron. Um, and then this allows you to push the insert directly into the part while it's being heated. There are other ways to do it, and I can demonstrate that, but this is by far the most efficient way of doing it. Um, aside from this and a soldering iron, you're going to want some kind of a hot uh, air gun. Um, the kit that I use actually comes with both. It's just a little rework station. Um, it's not my primary soldering iron and not my primary heat gun. So I kind of keep these set aside just for this purpose. So as you can see, I've already got the small tip on here, which is designed to handle these tiny little M3 inserts. So basically, the process goes like this. I'm going to show you how to both insert the brass into a 3D print, and then I'm going to actually show you how to remove them as well if you want to recycle them. Um, because if you don't end up using a part like this one that I did, then you'll want to reclaim these. You just don't want to throw this away because these can be valuable later. So I'm going to show you how to remove these. But first, let's get into how to actually insert into a new print. First, make sure that the print is ready for the inserts. Uh, obviously, you're not going to use a straight three millimeter diameter hole, you're actually going to use a much larger hole that's specifically designed for the insert. You can find the best guides for those online for the specific insert that you're using. For example, you don't want to be able to like just push the insert in with your finger. You want it sized just large enough to where you can get the insert in, but small enough that it makes contact with the little grooves on the sides of the insert. So if you're designing files around the idea of using these brass inserts, make sure that you properly size the holes for the inserts. So next, I'm gonna show you how to actually get the insert in. 
One other thing that you're going to need is a very flat and hard surface. Now this is actually a mirror tile that I have turned upside down, but it's flat and perfectly flat and hard. That's what you want. Um, don't do this on a wooden table. Uh, glass is pretty much the perfect surface for this. You can use a mirror. You can use just a sheet of glass. Um, you've got glass on your hotbed without any other coating on it like PEI or anything like that, you could actually use that. But let's go ahead and kick on the soldering iron. So I use my soldering iron at about 205 Fahrenheit. I know that we're used to dealing in Celsius when it comes to 3D printing, but most American soldering irons operate in Fahrenheit. So um, basically what I'm trying to do is I'm getting past the glass transition temp, but not quite up to the temp of extrusion. I just want to be able to get it hot enough to get in there and melt the plastic enough to where it kind of conforms into the little grooves of the brass insert. So now that it's up to temp, I'm going to take my soldering iron. And this is a, this is a little risky, but this is the best way to do it. Um, you take the insert and you just put it on the tip of the iron and let it preheat there. Now be very, very careful not to touch the actual iron. Uh, that will burn you, go figure. Um, but you give it a just like maybe five to 10 seconds of preheat, and then you just kind of gently ease it in to where that hole is, but you don't press it in all the way. You leave about a millimeter left, and then you do the rest of the pressing flush against the hard surface. And there you have it. That's an insert. Give it a little bit of a blow and let it cool down for a while. And that thing will be nice and sturdy and stable and won't come out. Um, and you just keep doing that with all four holes. And I'll do it again with a different size this time. Uh, the other thing that's important is to use the proper length insert. Too shallow of an insert might not be strong enough. Too long of an insert and you'll go past your 3D printed area. And it might actually pop out of the perimeter or top of your 3D print, and you don't want to do that. Um, and again, 205 is the temp I'm using. This is PETG. So if you're using this with PLA, you'll want to use a little lower temp, probably around the 170, 175 range. And if you're going into a higher temp material like nylon, you're going to want to up the temp to about 230, 235. Um, again, you're just trying to get close to glass transition a little above, but you don't want to get to extrusion temps. So now this one's preheated. I'm going to put that in. I'm not going to go all the way in. I'm going to finish by pressing against the hard surface, nice and flat. And there you go. So I would finish up this part by doing the other two holes the exact same way. So now let's say, I'm going to turn off my iron. Let's say I've got a part that I've already done it with, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm deciding I'm not gonna use this part, actually. I've got a different design, but I wanna reclaim my brass threaded inserts on this. It's a little bit different uh, to get these back properly. You can use a soldering iron to get these out. It's just a massive pain in the tuchus. What you're gonna wanna do instead is get your hot iron, or your hot uh, heat gun, and you're going to want to get a long bolt and a pair of pliers. I found over time of trial and error with these that this is the best method of getting these out nice and clean without having to later go and get a lot of goop, a lot of excess uh, plastic material off of the brass inserts. So. Uh, what you end up doing is you just take like a really long bolt. I'd say the longer the better. Um, I use about, I think this is a 40, 45 millimeter in length M3. Um, you want a long bolt because what you're going to actually be doing is you're going to be heating the bolt with a hot air gun um, while kind of heating the surface of the part. We don't want to melt the plastic too much or else it's going to goop out with the part. So what we're going to do is we're just going to heat this part and then we're going to yank. So let's get our hot air gun going. I've got my hot air gun set to about 230.
the reason why I've got it set higher than my soldering iron is because heat loss. I'm obviously blowing hot air and I am just blowing straight onto this. So I'm, I'm getting a lot of heat loss along the length of the bolt itself and just in the air generally. That and I don't want to expose it to heat for that long. So hence the higher temperature. So what I'm going to do is take my heat gun. I'm going to heat the bolt around the threading. And then I'm just going to kind of, kind of heat around the brass insert while still heating the threading. So I put my air gun up and then I grab my pliers and pull. And there it is. It's out. And not a single drop of PETG on it. Now that's going to be hot, <laughs> so you're going to want to set that aside and wait a second or use another bolt to do the rest of them. Um, it's incredibly simple once you get into the flow of things. Um, and they do cool down quite quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process with another one just so we got it down. And you want to screw it in a about the length of what you think the actual insert is. Uh, don't go too far or else you might end up heating up some plastic beyond it. Um, and don't go too shallow or else you might actually pull it out and not get the insert with it. Just pull the, the bolt out. You don't want that either. So. Again, I'm going to heat the threading. I'm trying not to heat towards the top because that's where I'm handling it most of the time, but I'm heating up the threading and I'm heating up around the surface of that insert. Just long enough and then ready to pull right out. And just like that. So that's basically how you work with brass threaded inserts. Um, they're incredibly fun to play with. I'm working on a charger for the Apple iPhone 12 and the watch, and it uses these brass inserts everywhere. It uses eight of them. So um, while I was playing around with this, I figured I would share my experience on how to use these threaded inserts. So uh, if you like this content and just basic tutorials with me and my cell phone. I'm uh, more than happy to do them. I don't expect any high production value with audio or video or anything like that. Um, I'll do my best to link to some of the stuff I've used in the video as far as like the inserts themselves, uh, my, my rework kit. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, I don't look quite as often as I used to, but I will do my best to answer those. And if this video was helpful, uh, give me a thumbs up. But be kind to each other, and it's good to see you all again. Have a great day. Happy printing.